Hello, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday's live 10-minute topic. We are talking about parenting the late bloomer, the smaller kids on the team. You know the ones, they often have the late birthdays. They're physically, they might not be as big, as strong as their, as their teammates. And this talk will address what, as parents, you can do to help them succeed. Our guest is Gordon McClellan, author, coach, and founder of Working with Parents in Sport, Gordon is also raising two athletes of his own. Gordon, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, great to be here again. All right, again, guys, this is live. So if you have any questions or comments throughout, please put them up on our Facebook page and we'll get Gordon to answer them for you. First of all, Gordon, a lot has been made about the older and the bigger kids. We did a 10-minute topic on that first. Um, they have the lucky birth dates, ending up getting better coaching and better training because they get into the system early and get caught up in that system that favors those bigger athletes. But this may not always be the case for them. In fact, you looked at the long-term success of some of these larger and older athletes and discovered that in the long run, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Yeah, I think when they uh, get to uh, mid and late teens and we looked at some of the uh, sides that were picked at international level uh, and some of the top club sides across a number of sports. And actually, a lot of those birth dates uh, actually start to really even themselves out. So um, if you can be patient enough and, and be in it for the long haul, um, you will get there in the end. What are, for, for these parents that might be listening to this that have the smaller kids, what are some of the their concerns? Like, what are they dealing with? I have really big kids, so I haven't had that issue. Well, I don't think any parent likes to see their child struggle. And I, I think for some parents who turn up each week and look at the size uh, of maybe of the opposition and the, and they watch their child try really, really hard and struggle to have a, uh, a positive impact on the game, it can be really, really tough. And it's a really tough thing watching our, our children struggle. So th that's a big thing. And it's something that they've got to learn to deal with. But, but the important thing is that they're really positive. They stay really positive and reinforce how well their children are actually doing. Well, you put together a list of things parents can do to help their kids who, have, who are on the smaller side. So let's start with that list. Number one, make sure your child is playing at the appropriate level. Yeah, and look, that's really important. You know, there's got to be uh, some challenge in there. You know, children need challenge, whether you're small or whether you're big. And what you've got to make sure is that, that that challenge is appropriate. If it's really, really tough and your child is doing lots and lots of good things and lots of things right, but is really struggling to have any success, then perhaps it's maybe not the right level for them to be playing at. Yes, there has to be some struggle, but they also need to enjoy some of those successes along the way. So just check with the coaches and with the teams that, that they're playing with um, that that's the case. And I know sometimes that can be hard to do on one team. I know I used to coach a little kid in basketball on rec side who was incredible. And I kept saying, why is he playing with us on this rec team? And they said he also does club so that he has challenge and some success. So sometimes, I don't mean to add on to parents' burden, but sometimes you might have to even be on or play two different kinds of leagues. Um, number two, praise their process, not their outcome. Yeah, look, if you go down the outcome route um, with the, the smaller child or the, the late developer, um, you know, you may not have too much joy. The, the reality is that youth sport is dominated by some of those bigger children. So going back to the uh, process, not the outcome. So the things we can control, we can control things like work rate. We can control if our children's skill levels are improving. We can control if they're organizing themselves, if they're packing their own bag, if they're, if they're taking some ownership of the, the experience. We can... Uh, control so they can control some of the decisions that they make uh, during their sports games. Now, the, the, the impact may not be there, but if the decision's right, we need to make sure that we're praising these things. So we've got to praise these extra things rather than, you know, did we win? Did we score? Did we have a major impact on the game? And, and what about you said that um, make sure your child knows that it won't always be this way, that it will change. Yeah, it's a difficult one to explain this, but we've got to find a way of explaining to, to young children and players how talent actually develops and be able to say to them, do you know what? You may not be as good as somebody now, 
you know they may have done more hours they may be bigger they may be emotionally um, more developed but if our children really want to do something we have to explain to them that that talent doesn't develop on this lovely sort of straight line graph that we all want to see as parents you know there's going to be huge spikes going to go down it's going to stay still it's going to go down again it'll go up it'll come back down and and we need to explain to our children that it's all just part of what one long journey and, and number four, emphasize the grit and resilience they're learning that other larger athletes may not be. Yeah, and, and look, all these, some of these character skills and some of these skills that we're talking about here will carry over into everyday life. It doesn't just have to be a sports thing. You know, it'll do them good out in, in the workplace. So make sure that we're celebrating and encouraging uh, some of those traits that, that, that do have a big impact on our life as a whole. Yeah, and, and that grit thing, I mean, I have, as I've often mentioned on these topics, you know, the bigger, uh, we have the bigger size kids, my husband and I are pretty tall, and it really does, it, it, it ends up being difficult for them because they've, things have come easy, and they've um, been so much bigger and stronger that they don't really develop that grit and determination, and my friends with those smaller kids, I see it in their kids, they're just like going to win, they're going to get through, and so parents really do need to remember that even though, like you're saying, it'll go up and down, that the things they're learning being smaller are actually in the long run going to be so incredibly helpful for them in life and in sports. Yeah, and the, and the day they catch up, they will absolutely fly. If, that, if that's been celebrated and they've gone through the process, the day they catch up physically and mentally, they will absolutely fly at that stage if it's been handled well. That's exactly right. All right, Mark has a question. He says, great topic. We always put the emphasis on work. What are your thoughts on participation awards? <laughs> I was going a bit off uh, a bit off thing. Look, I, I'm, uh, I always apologize in our presentations around the world. And, and for me, w winning is an, an integral part of sports, as is, as is competition. From a participation point of view, I think children should be participating for – uh, in sport for getting things uh, out of it, you know, for, you know, life skills. We we shouldn't be rewarding them for uh, just taking part. They should want to take part because they enjoy it. They're playing with their friends. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be being rewarded for that. At the same time, maybe then if, if you know, some people have a different opinion on it, we maybe just need to, uh, well, what's the best way of putting it? Just take away the value of winning slightly and put it in its correct place. That it that it shouldn't be the number one factor in why children are playing or you're involving your child in sport. And maybe it's an age appropriate for the real young ages. It's fun to take home a trophy and keeps them coming back. But after the age of I don't know nine or something, <laughs> ten, who knows? Everyone does it different. I know some people are getting rid of them completely. Um, thanks, Mark, for that great question. And, and, and also, Asia, there, just saying, I mean, my, my son's very funny. He's nine, and, you know, we've talked in the past, and he's got a, a, a football contract in the UK that I struggle with, and he has absolutely no interest in any trophy that he hasn't earned. So he's been given lots of those over the years, but he actually doesn't want anything to do with it. And actually, the ones that he has won or he's won by right are the ones that he keeps. And the others is like, well, you know, what was the point in that? So, look, everybody's different. I think at the end of the day, if if clubs, coaches are encouraging children for the right reasons, we, we can find a, a path that's suitable for everybody. That's right. Okay, moving on. Our 10 minutes are running down. You put together a list of what parents shouldn't do. What are some of those things? Well, certainly don't panic, you know, don't don't panic when you first set them off if they're finding it really, really tough. You know, their time will come in the end. Um, likewise, don't don't allow them to give up at the first sign of difficulty. This is your chance to really instill some of that resilience and grit that, that we were talking about earlier. And don't worry about the results. Don't worry about whether they're winning. Don't worry too much about, you know, how many they've scored. I have huge sympathy for you that many of the early selection processes favour the bigger athlete with the better birthday. But if you can just remember that sport's a long-term journey and in the end we know that you will catch up and you can manage those situations, then you, you, you will get there in the end. And before we go really quick, what, if anything, can a coach do to help 
if you're coaching athletes and you have a big range, what can they do for those smaller kids? I think, first of all, it'd be interesting if we ask coaches if they were aware of people's birthdays. I think it's really important to have a look at the people you're working with and just see where they are actually born in the year and have some understanding of that. And look, in within sessions, you know, maybe group them appropriately. Okay, you might have six bigger children, you might have six smaller ones. Do some of the activities where the smaller ones against the smaller child. So they have that success and joy. And then maybe put them against the bigger child so that, that, that they realize that they're still part of that age group and whatever else. Praise the correct things as coaches. You know, it, it's don't praise lots of winning and lots of goal score because you're going to have a number of people in your team who who won't be doing a lot of that. And you've got to find other things to to congratulate congratulate them for and encourage, encourage, encourage. You know, you, you brought up a really good point there too. Sometimes, like my youngest daughter, she's a December 26th birthday. So in soccer, that's really bad because you're yeah. at the very end of it. But she's tall. And it's interesting because just because you're tall, I, I like what you said about actually knowing their birth dates, because she's probably, though, at this young age, still pretty behind on the curve of development. So sometimes they would never guess she was younger or the youngest on the team. And knowing that is really helpful. And I usually try to or I have in the past, you know, told the coach that myself because I think it's important to know. So that was a great point I wanted to say, too. All right. Let's make sure we don't have any other questions before we close this down. Um, Anybody else out there? We've got a bunch of likes. Mark, thanks again for your question. And Gordon, thank you. We're going to have you back on really soon. You, you write so many terrific and interesting posts on your website at www.parentsinsport.co.uk. And you can hear more from Gordon there. And we'll hear more from you soon. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you.